you know that uh, if you fuck this up, people hate you more than Shane, right? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. That'd, that'd be funny. First, first time pod guy. It's a scary position to be in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have drug Shane through the mud, built him up, told everybody about his awkwardly large penis for his size, and then tear him right back down. He also pisses off every single fucking listener somehow. Mm-hmm. I think that's a goal in life for him. Yeah. I mean, that. Yeah. Yeah. When he sits down here, yep. He's got his own list. Yeah. I think that, I think he has a, uh, he definitely has um, a priority in his life to piss people off. But like in a nice way, but also in a degrading way. Very degrading. It is degrading. Yeah. Like he doesn't like to, he's not, he's like, he doesn't pussyfoot around dude. like the punchline. No. Like if you say all of a sudden he's like, I hate Whataburger, like how would you piss off everybody from Texas? Say you hate Whataburger. <laughs> How do you piss off everybody from Ohio? Tell them you fucking hate them. He literally says, I hate you if you're from Ohio. Dude hates Daniel Craig. Like, How can you hate Daniel pisses, Craig? That pisses me off. I don't like that. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, that's Shane yeah. in a nutshell. What a burger, huh, dude? I've never had that yet. Oh, we, I mean, we'll be down in Texas, so you'll be able to try it one day. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had it either. I never experienced it. I know it's going to bang my belly up. Though. I don't care what anybody says. Five Guys is on top. I think Five Guys is. Yeah. Up that, there. That's that's yeah. that's mine. I like In and Out though. In and Out was good, but Five Guys is fire. Yeah, it's a little thick boy stuff. Yeah, thick boy stuff. Yeah, man. Woo! I gotta remember. First or last, this. baby. I know. Holy <laughs> shit! All right, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the HWMF podcast. I am your host Seth Frizzy here with my heterosexual life mate Bob. Hello. And for the very first time here. Taking Shane's position for the day because he's for the week because Shane is on vacation. Aiden, hello, new employee. Hello, hello. He is uh, he is our con- he is added to the content team, and we're excited to have him. So uh, feel free to fuck with him and tell him he's a huge piece of shit like you do, Shane. <laughs> right here. <laughs> you pissed off a couple people recently with our with our natty or not videos. So Dude, they got they got a lot of people going. Job. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Well, Bob, Seth, good morning. Good morning. It's been a minute. It's been very long. I think it's been a few minutes. Yeah. I think a lot of people, if there was one thing that people asked me more of than anything, it's been the podcast. Number one request in my DMs. <laughs> yep. Number two, not my penis either. <laughs> <laughs> not that. But no, it's uh, this has been uh, in the making. There is a lot to go through. Mm-hmm. There is a ton of stuff to talk about. The world has gone even more crazy than the last time we had one of these podcasts. Mm-hmm. The companies have gone more crazy than the last time we had one of these. Um, I think that it's just everybody's just wanting more. Yeah. I don't think there's many things on the internet that are intense, funny, emotional, and just overall great listening. Mm-hmm. This is one of those things for everybody. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of stuff to unpack and talk about. A lot of really cool shit, as you can see the spread on this table and my favorite shirt of all time that we have ever made. Um, But there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Um, But first of all, did you have a good weekend? It was good. Yeah. It was good. It was busy. I was in the blog all weekend. Uh, Some big training. Kim's birthday yesterday. Mm. Yeah. 30. 34. 34. Yeah. Yep. Officially mid thirties. Officially, yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. She I'm was a... feeling it like instant. Like <laughs> woke up instant like new aches and pains. Dude. It is it's that's it's it is uh I I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Mm-mm. Because at mid thirties, you're like, fuck, I'm getting older. Mm-hmm. Like in my late thirties, I feel like I'm gonna be thirty nine in a couple months. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I have so I'm starting to crest into that little bit of a wiser man. Right. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm, I feel like that's where I'm starting to get to as being like, rather than getting like, uh, you're no longer young. I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm cresting 40. Once I get to 40, I'm like, and you're wise and smart and all that shit. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm noticing it. Like, like even like my, my training, like I don't, I don't recover like I, like I did. Like I don't have any hip knee, ankle feet problems like Mm -hmm. i'm i'm blessed with that but like the aches and pains are like it's just new feelings like new sensations oh yeah like those ones where like i gotta be careful when like i plant that hard Mm. (laughs) or pivot 
try to pivot like a fucking running back. It's, I, I can't do it Oh, anymore. no, no, no. There's no pivoting. No. No. Uh-uh. No. no, Hannah had her first old person thing, and she's 28. She uh, she did a seat drop on the trampoline. That's where you dropped your butt and uh-huh. it popped back up on your feet. She was trying to show SJ. Well, I don't think she anticipated like the shock wave as much as she should have. Mm-hmm. Well, her fucking whole right side of her back locked up. Yeah. It's as hard as this table. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and she's like, what do you think it's from? And I'm like, it's the fucking seat drop. She's like, there's no way. I probably threw a mat somewhere. I'm like, no, you would have felt that. Yeah. She's like, I did feel like a shock wave went through my body. I'm like, why do you think? I don't do things Mm -hmm. because when we went on vacation, I wouldn't play volleyball. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in the sand diving. Dude, sand is a dangerous place. No, no, no volleyball for Seth. I sat on the sidelines and watched Don Roten drink fucking Jägermeister at fucking 85 degree weather. (laughs) I I was, I was on the sidelines, but, uh, but no, I won't do it. Getting old. Yeah. Getting old. And I like my life. Mm -hmm. I like my routine. I like how I do things. So I don't want to fuck with it. Mm Mm-hmm. Even though I get very tempted to want to do dumb shit. Yeah. I don't. Sometimes I think I should, though. Sometimes I, I think it's what I need, but then also the exact, I don't need it, like, at all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, sometimes I want to let loose and get super fucking pissed drunk and yeah. all that. And then I'm like, that's a really bad idea. That's in the book of bad ideas. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> and mid, mid to late 30s, I had three beers last night. Mm. And Anything I, tasty? Yeah, um, had uh, that General Braddock's by Brew Gentlemen's. Mm. They had it on tap at Jenny's. Oh, nice. Had two there. A local. Well, I had four beers. Had two there, <laughs> two at, um, uh, what's right next door to Jenny's, right up the road? The tavern? That little brewery. Oh, Helltown. Helltown. Yeah. yeah we stopped in at Helltown. Nice. And had two there. Not bad. No, no. Love was, the scenery yeah, there. Yeah, we sat outside. But... I felt totally fine last night. I mean, burned one, went to bed, Mm -hmm. fine. Had that hangover feeling the moment I woke up. I'm like, no fucking way. (laughs) Like, no way. (laughs) And yeah, it was there. It's still kind of hanging around right now. You know what? This is that, that right there explains our people. Like everybody listening. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that feeling. I think that Heather should create a product for us. Agreed. That that is for like the weekend warriors because mm-hmm. I love having a few fresh beers, mm-hmm. but I fucking hate that little bit of a hangover. Mm-hmm. Like I, there's just it's like I fucking that's what that's what keeps me back. That yeah. that holds me to that three beer limit. Mm-hmm. I know it's a hydration thing. Oh like, yeah, I, like I know it's just ruining my like already depleted state. Like it's just completely ruining that. I think everybody. I think everybody is dehydrated to some degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but no, I think that because uh, our people are definitely like we like to work out, mm-hmm. love to work out, love to train, like to eat healthy, and then all of a sudden the degenerate comes out in us, yeah. and we're like, a couple beers, mm-hmm. maybe like Dean. I can somehow that fucking guy is in his later forties. He's like forty seven. I think he. If I feel like I look at him and he feels better than I do, I don't know. That though. man will drink twelve seltzers. Yeah. And then somehow wake up groggy as fuck, clear his throat, and start doing cardio. <laughs> I'm like, my God, you're like a fucking, I don't even know what. He's a, it, I saw he's running now. Did you see he was running on the assault thing? I, and... I might have climbed up his ass a little bit. Did you? Like maybe a month or so ago yeah. when I was like, hey, dude, like, like you eat like shit. You drink a lot. Mm-hmm. Not He doesn't. Whenever he drinks, he drinks a lot. But whatever Dean does at a given moment, he does to the fullest extent. Yes. I and mean, that's what makes Dean Dean. For sure. But I'm like, hey, you should probably start doing some like cardio. Like more like a little bit more functional stuff. Get that heart rate up and then bring it back down. Like it did wonders for me. Yeah. And if it worked for me, it's got to work for a lot of people. But yeah, so he has, uh, I, I mean, if he put it on the internet, like now he's committing to it. He is. Yeah. yeah everyone's seeing it now. Yeah. It's, it's intense. Dino. But... Man. Mm. So, everybody, if uh, if if you've been living under a rock, you, you <laughs> noticed that we haven't done a podcast. But now that we're back, uh, we're I'm I'm excited because um, there's a lot to unpack and a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. And at this company, it is very intense. We have four dozen plus employees. Um, we have Axe and Sledge, All American Roughneck, Just Work Energy. Elegance Elite Gymnastics, and then just a growing 
process to owning a business of this size. And first of all, thank you for all the support. It is incredible to be able to be in this position, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that things around here get intense. I'd be lying that uh, whenever, whenever it comes time to do work for the businesses, everybody gets into a mode that is very good for the company, but sometimes not good for personalities and each other yeah. or relationships. Mm -hmm. And you've known me long enough to say that there is a whole lot of good with Seth. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of really intense, I wish you just shut the fuck up and go away for a little bit. Right. I am not easy to work with. I'm not easy to be around every single day. So one of the reasons that we have stepped back from the podcast for a minute was because we needed to reevaluate how we do things around here and to make sure that we put the business, our customers, and our people up front first. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, What's the use of this all if you can't enjoy it all? Right. This isn't this isn't worth it unless you can enjoy it all. And um, you know, for me, I uh, everybody thinks I'm like this. It's always great with Seth. He's always in a great mood online, and look at him do his stuff. And that's true. It is. But there is a few personalities within me, mm -hmm. and one of the ones that I have is I am batshit fucking crazy. I am over the top, nonstop all the time, every day. And sometimes I need to take a step back, soak it all in and really realize how great and wonderful everything is. And, um, and know that it is okay to breathe. Mm -hmm. It is. And uh, it's, I don't even know if there's many people out there like me. I think a few. Yeah, none that I've met in person. <laughs> But I've seen bits and pieces of personalities on the internet that yeah. are similar. Yeah. And and they're people that are juggling similar big things. Like yes. Not small things. No, and, you know. and and I and I said it, you know, to you uh last week or a couple of weeks ago, I was like, We're not really supposed to be here. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like one of the reasons that I'm so intense and over the top is because we're not supposed to be here. Like, we're just a couple of fucking, we were a couple of young dudes just hoping that things would work out because we, we had something that we knew was special. We had our specific roles in what we knew we could accomplish together. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I never thought that I would own a company with 48 employees. Oh, my God. I, I didn't think we'd have any employees. I never thought you know? that that whenever I go to bed at nighttime, I would be thinking about um, like all of the people that we work with, mm -hmm. all the people that work for us, the couples, the families, watching Shane buy a big house now. Mm -hmm. Like Shane just bought a, Shane bought a big boy house. Very nice house. Aiden and Sydney moved from Michigan. We have Kelly and Corey. We have Jay and Megan. We have families that work here, Lydia and Joe. It is wild what we have created. And I take that super personal. Yeah. And whenever I take something personal, <laughs> once, once I take it personal, I get fucking super intense. I like, I, I begin to like, uh, believe that it is part of me, mm -hmm. which it is. But then whenever I believe it is part of me, there's a lot of really heart, passion and emotion that goes into it. And then a lot of like, like, like what is that movie? Uh, of mice and men with Lenny uh, holds on to it and squeezes it to yeah, death. Yeah, a little bit of that too. Um, but I, I, we're not, we weren't supposed to be here. No, and and I mean, I was reflecting on on that when we talked about it last week, and I was trying to figure out like what has what has changed from when we first started everything together, and all we had was all we had to lose was per, like stuff to us like we weren't we weren't worried about the employees and the other people like any loss was like our, on us yeah but like what hasn't changed is like that that like reason to keep going and to keep doing what we're doing i still work and get into modes as if my mortgage payment depends on it as if my car payment depends on it, as the, the school tuition depends on it you know because kim was through school when we started everything yeah I still get into that same mode. Like it's all going to be taken away from me 
tomorrow yeah. if I don't if I'm not in it. Yes, you know, and and the bigger it's gotten, mm. the more intense it has become, and that mindset like shifts back to that like fight or flight, right? And it gets fucking super intense, mm -hmm. and I think it's normal to be honest. Yeah, uh, because we're not supposed to be here. I'm a fucking complete degenerate. Mm -hmm. I am a fucking somehow somehow I've went from being <laughs> like not giving a flying fuck about anything when I was in my early 20s. I didn't give a fuck about shit. And then now um, we have all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It just it just continued to happen. I didn't care about anything. And I've become 200 pounds of functional and fuckable. I'm healthy. I take into consideration every single waking moment of my life about my overall health, my heart rate, my resting heart rate. Meanwhile, back in my fucking mid-20s, I'm like, I should take another Anadrol before legs. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. I think, I don't think, I think I could go back to taking Anadrol right now and it would have more of an effect on my mental status than it would on my physical health. Mm -hmm. I think my heart rate would increase just from anxiety of taking an <laughs> Anadrol and it. putting it in my mouth and actually like the physical effects from it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but for me, it's like there, that crazy is still inside of me. That crazy is still in there and it comes out at certain times and it comes out especially towards the company because I'm able to direct even more attention to it. And it's like, fuck me. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe you should go back to being a sauce head. <laughs> you might lighten the fuck up a little bit, you crazy bastard. But no, no, it's, uh, it's, this is incredible. No, but whenever I was looking at the pictures, um, Hannah mentioned uh, there was one profile shot of me that she's like, you're handsome in this picture. And I'm like, all right, which one is this, you know? And it was me, uh, it was in the shoot at, at Joel's buddy's property. Mm -hmm. and you're shaking your head. You're I like, know. yeah, you know, I was looking. <laughs> I was in the orange hoodie and then in the, the brown pocket tee. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it, I'm like, I don't know who the fuck that guy is. I look at myself and don't think it's me. I, th I think I'm like, oh, there's, that's not me, but then it is me. I'm like, fuck. God damn it. When, when we were at that shoot and you took the orange hoodie off and you were, I didn't know what shirt you had on underneath, but when I saw everything you had on, <laughs> you just reminded me of your dad. <laughs> like, uh, no, and, and not, that is not, a, that is not a bad thing. Like that's not, it wasn't anything like a negative, like look. And I'm like, I'm sweating I was like, holy shit. I was like, looks just like Greg. Ferrosi. There's Greg for OC. Yep. Yep. <sighs> Because like the, the dudes we were with, you know, they were hanging trees. They knew exactly what the fuck they were doing. Mm, yep. But then when I saw you march over, I'm like, I wonder if he's going to like tell them how to do this or how nope. to run that equipment. I'm like, nope. <laughs> That's something Greg Ferrosi would but do. But it would. Yep. It would. Uh -huh. <laughs> or have a million questions about that a piece of equipment when you bought it. But no, I thought the same thing. This is your vibe. 100%. If there was ever a release that had a bit of me in every single item, mm -hmm. it is this one. Yep. This is, I think that, um, I mean, the camos just fucking pull me in. Dude, they're outstanding. Pull me in. Yeah. The camos are probably my favorite thing that we've ever done. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, honest to God, I got more DMs about, uh, I got more DMs about this thing in the fucking driveway workout that we filmed, mm -hmm. about this camo, the, uh, the Dead Earth camo, mm -hmm. than any other thing. Other than the KAP shirts, this is number two. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck me. I'm so pumped because it's like, this camo is like, I mean, it's functional. Deer don't, animals don't see the same way we do. That's one thing that, you know, like the camos, they matter to a certain degree. But the, the fashion aspect plays a huge role in camo. Yeah. Like, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if you're a fucking podunk hillbilly from somewhere. You're going to be like, I don't like the look of that camo. That means you don't like the style. Mm -hmm. You are a fashionable son of a bitch, even if you are a fucking Western PA hillbilly. Yep. You still have it in you. <laughs> So making it look cool is a massive part because otherwise, why the fuck would you want to wear it? Because mm -hmm. um, there's so many different camo companies out there. Yep. And they're specific to where you're hunting. But, uh, but these two are, I mean, I, I, I love them because we created them. Like yeah, the colors, the everything. Yeah, it was, it was fun to, to do something like this, you know, because we, we've tried some things in the past. You know, it was all like a, a pretty generalized camouflage and then we'd throw axes and sledges in it on that one pump cover we did but um 
when me and Nick started to design this and your initial like uh what you wanted to see was like having some sort of like brushed like stroke to it and I'm like it's actually a phenomenal idea like instead of just having these typical curves of the camo yeah. and and it, and it kind of looks like the brush of like you know the woods uh, yeah brush stroke well. I was like I I you guys do a good job with that <laughs> Taking taking the the random things I say, mm -hmm. writing it down, and then all of a sudden like making it occur. Yeah. But this colorway, hands down, my favorite colorway oh, mm -hmm. shit, of any of any camo out there. Yeah, any camo out there. I mean, it took us. It was a few days of back and forths. Less orange, more orange, more tan, less tan. Mm -hmm. Hue off. More like make the blacks more black. More black like, in there. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I'm. I'm my favorite thing yeah and everybody so we got a topic on the the camos <clears throat> everything that we have here everything that for this release is custom as a motherfucker mm -hmm. we are a custom apparel brand custom 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 these hats performance hats you know the melon hats that are fucking 58 dollars a hat nope we have ours that are cheaper and i think the same quality i think so too i think they're phenomenal yeah. this is a this is a five panel so it has a higher top and then we have the six panels here that are full camo which that's the number of panels on there, which is a little low pro, lower profile on the front, a little applique on there. And this is, you know what I realized this hat is? Hmm. Dashboard hat. Yep. Because bright orange. Yep. It's one of those things like, yeah, I, it's orange. Hunter's orange. It's now part of the truck. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Mine, there is one on, I have one in my hands and then I have one on the dashboard. Mm -hmm. The coolest thing about the hats, other than the quality of them, is just the customized shit on them, like the fill the freezer on the underbrim, the taping on the inside, like to be able to do a custom. Uh, bro, these hats are nicer than Richardson. Mm -hmm. They're nicer than Yupong. They're nicer than any hat that we have used for our company in the past seven years. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, an absolute pleasure to to deal with these guys. I mean, the these two in the middle, I was most nervous about. I mean, when you're when you're doing a full spread like that on anything whether it's a shirt or a hat you know there's always going to be some variations in color and things of that nature but like the people we work with our manufacturers they are outstanding at what they do i mean this is literally what it looked like on me and nick's computer screen yes and they made it a reality um it's it's crazy i love it yeah i love it but no the uh so we have for this release we have Three brand new performance tees. Mm -hmm. These are long sleeves. They're LT. What did you call them? Yeah, LT performance, like light performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Bob names the majority of everything and then fills me in about why they were named that way. I probably might have said a word or two at some point, and then all of a sudden I'm like, nice, nice. Because you take more, you take a whole lot of pride in that. I do, yeah. And that's something that, uh, I mean, it's noticeable. Whenever you go onto the blog and you see like LT performance, and I'm like, it looks better than just performance tea. Right. Uh, but uh, no, we have three and they are designed. So these long sleeve performance shirts are designed to keep you warm in the cool in the shade mm -hmm. and then keep you cool in the sun and the heat. Mm -hmm. That's part of the design of these types of shirts. They're mimicked from all the camo, from all the uh, camo company stuff I use for hunting. Mm -hmm. So whenever last year I was like, we should be able to find manufacturer for this shit. The shirt, some of the shirts I bought were like ninety dollars a shirt. Yeah, right. From Kuyu or Sitka or uh, First Light's another company. Um, but those type of companies will do like merino wools and bamboos and things like that. And motherfucker, they're expensive. Yeah, like Nike. You said Nike did their merino wool. It was like one hundred and twenty dollars a shirt. Yeah, dude, they're like a hundred, hundred and twelve, hundred and fifteen dollars. Yeah, for uh, essentially a base layer. They're they're a know? base layer performance tees, mm -hmm. and they're made for these reasons. And they're when in hunting you layer your clothes so that way, like you can layer up and layer down because if you're in the mountains, it starts chilly and gets warm, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it gets fucking twenty nine degrees at nighttime again somehow when it was seventy five during the day. Right. So that's the reason for the layers, and you don't want them to be bulky. You want them to be able to be folded up or rolled up into super small so they fit in your bag. Hence these. Mm -hmm. So you being Iron Man and me being functional fuckable hunter and going into the woods and getting into it all, we should fucking make them. Yeah. So we did these. Mm -hmm. And they are 92 poly, 8% spandex, and then they're treated for antimicrobial char characteristics. Yep. So that means that they don't stink. Mm -hmm. 
The reason we did that was so that um, it would not be that seventy. $80, $90 price tag. Mm -hmm. We wanted to keep it affordable for all of you beautiful motherfuckers. Yeah. Because we know how ruthless the economy is and society in general. So you guys should be able to get cool stuff at decent prices that are the same, that are a very similar level of quality of other items. Yeah. I mean, we, we obviously wanted to go after that, that full Merino wool uh, profile, but any company you're buying from, if they're marketing it as Merino wool, and it's under a hundred dollars. You you should start questioning if it actually is merino wool because there's only one country, one part of the world that this merino wool is coming from, and that's New Zealand. The best comes from New the, Zealand. The one hundred percent best. So we we wanted to find something that was comparable, but then also wasn't going to be a ninety to a hundred dollars at retail um, for anyone. Dude, it's it's. It's hard to make stuff at an affordable price for the working man. Yeah. Like whenever, for everybody that's wondering right now, one of the reasons that working with me is very difficult is, is because I think of you guys every single waking moment. Mm -hmm. And I usually put us in second mm -hmm. rather than first and look out for our people. I just have high expectations for everybody here and us in general. Mm -hmm. It's our jobs. And I think of the people first. And whenever we're creating anything, <clears throat> after it being cool, quality, it's price range. Mm -hmm. Because whenever I was on my own, two kids, one income, just me, on my own, with the girls, I budgeted my money. There's videos out there about how I budgeted my money to go to the grocery store. I went to three different grocery stores. Me to get a cool hat or a cool hoodie was a big deal for me. I bought one work hoodie every fall. That's why we have the hoodie release. Mm -hmm. I bought hats throughout the year just because I liked hats so much. I was, I'm just a hat guy. So I would always budget my money so that I would still be able to do those things when I didn't have a whole lot of money so I could feel good about myself and feel confident to put on a new work hoodie to go outside and cut my grass in in the fall or make fires or sit by the bonfire. Like, that's how my head works. It made me feel good whenever... I didn't have a whole lot in my life. So the hoodie release literally in October was designed around that concept. It was thinking of how I lived my life and I know other people that are in like that similar mindset to me live. You get to buy one hoodie. Cool, man. I got, I got 40 bucks, bro. <laughs> that's, that's all I got right yeah. now. That's all I got because I got to buy food and I got the kids. They, uh, you know, Christmas is coming up. So I can't, I can't spend I can't spend a whole lot of fucking money right now. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you and I take incredibly serious, serious here, and I am that way. So when it comes to the manufacturing aspect, I, I want to create the highest quality products that we can at a price where we are comfortable selling to our people. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the manufacturers we deal with and this shirt that I have on right now, we know that they that other companies make a very similar shirt to this, um, with this similar material, and sell for seventy five dollars. We I won't, I won't do it, even though you and I have gotten into some arguments about two or three dollars here or there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that our people know by us saying it right now that you guys are on the forefront whenever we're looking at things from a price standpoint. Yep. I think that you guys should be able to get performance hats that are just like melon. I'm not spending 50 some fucking dollars on a hat, dude. No matter how much money I ever make, I ain't fucking doing it. Not going to do it. But then you and Ange found a manufacturer that makes fucking fire hats, just like Melon, that we can sell to people for like $38, $39.99. I'm like, fuck yeah. Now we're talking, motherfuckers. Yep. And that's after me having some pretty ignorant meetings and saying some things that I probably regret in meetings. But we found it. We did. Good for our people. Mm -hmm. We're still friends. Yep. We're still going to make money. We're still good. But those are things that occur whenever we have a company of the size that we do. Mm -hmm. And I and I think it's super important to be able to make things for people, especially right now whenever the fucking economy is just squishing the fucking shit out of people. Mm -hmm. Squishing the shit out of people. I'm like, you should still be able to buy a fucking cool camo shirt for the fall that you should feel like good in. Yeah. Like you're excited to buy it. You're excited to buy uh, a piece of apparel that makes you feel good about yourself. You got a hundred bucks to spend. 
what are you going to do for yourself? When you and you can actually wear it and use it and rewash it and it be, you know what I mean? Like the the I have a few of those melon hats. I've worn them like once or twice because I'm I don't want it to be. Yeah, you, you're I like oh want, fuck! Like I just spent like, eighty dollars on a fucking hoodie, a work hoodie that I'm yeah. never going to wear. Yep, wear it. Where ideally I want to be wearing it when I'm working outside. Yes. It, that's why I bought it. And I'm fearful because of. Because I'm going to fuck it up. Yep. Yeah. No, I don't want. I I won't do it because that's not that's not who I am. That's not like in that's not in my roots. Mm -hmm. Like. We designed an entire company around my mentality of how much I love hoodies mm -hmm. in October. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny actually well everyone knows the october release has the hoodie release and it's because of, uh, it's it's seth's release yeah it's, it's the hoodie release i mean everybody here knows it's seth's release yeah. i think everybody gets it he's ready for hoodies i mean i'm not gonna lie this is you have uh, i put in the i put in the bio last night i was like everybody i got my one orange item this year it's here my one orange item that i'm allowed to do every single year and it is um like i had it in the i, I hung it up you know, in the mirror thing by our door. I don't know what the fucking things are called. I had it hung up on the rack and every single kid was like, is that your new hoodie, dad? And I'm like, yes, it is. It's my new hoodie. <laughs> like all of them fucking knew it. I just, I, we have become a custom brand where we're able to do everything that custom apparel brands are able to do. Two podunk silly motherfuckers are able to do it now. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Yeah, I mean, it, it was hard to, it was hard to transition like the the mentality with like going as custom as we are now because we've always been so limited and restricted to like oh no we can't do this we can't do that now it's like our manufacturers are rarely saying no to me when i come to them with like an uh, idea you rarely design. say no to me now the only things that i get told no anymore or from the fucking systems people and <laughs> fucking douchebags on the back end doing their computer tech shit. <laughs> Everybody's like, maybe I don't want to work for Seth after this podcast. Maybe I don't think I should work there. Maybe it'd be a little fucking much. I mean, dude, I, I, I'm because when it, I don't know, it's nuts. It's just, it's super cool. Like I got my orange hoodie. I'm pumped. You won't hear you after I got this. You haven't heard too much from me about Anything that else that we're doing, like, uh, I don't know, the October release is super fucking cool. The Black Friday release is out of fucking hand. Out of hand, Black Friday release. We have items coming that are just, they are more, they are more, I guess that's why I'm so intense about it all. They're more than I ever thought we would ever do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're way more. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Since, I mean, I'm, I'm tickled pink. We have the we have new drop shoulder tees, everybody. Finally, oversized drop shoulder tees. Yeah, took a minute. Yeah, I. They were a bitch. They were a huge bitch. Yeah, they were like fucking Lizzo. <laughs> <laughs> because um, maybe whenever we get them in, I'm uh, uh, I'm not going to. The first time I grab anything, I'm not going to say it's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, how can I pick this fucking thing apart? Yep. Because, dude, that's what people do. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what people do. They pick shit the fuck apart immediately. So I'm like, how can we do it? And uh, but the drop shoulder tees, these we we designed. We st whenever we were just starting to design everything, after we put our hands on these, mm -hmm. we started putting everything in a drop shoulder tee. Yeah, like oh, this design would look good on a drop shoulder tee. This design would look look good. And I'm like, hey, maybe like we can't not do a classic tee in, right. in the fall. Yeah. However, the drop shoulder tees are 100% cotton. They are a different material than our regular classic tees. But they are absolute fire. Mm -hmm. The fitment is incredible. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, you're going to do a video on that too, sir. We'll see it. Mm -hmm. But finally have drop shoulder tees. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the big, the big, two big things on them. If you've been buying our oversized tees, it's essentially just sizing up twice. It's like two and a half sizes. Two and a half sizes. Or one and a half. What was it? Uh, currently. So you, you've probably been noticing like they're awkwardly long, um, especially if you're a shorter dude. You know, um, and then just really not like the the extended like sleeve that you want. You like know, down to the top of the form. Yeah, right. So these these are to really have that nice, big roomy fitment. Mm -hmm. Drops off the shoulder, but then 
uh, the length is like a normal t-shirt. Looks, looks. Essentially. I love it. Yeah. Four of them. Three of them. Three of them. Three of them. Earth yep. tones. Earth tone release. Big earth tone guy. Big earth tone guy. Again, I never thought like, uh, Hannah told me I looked fucking handsome in the brown pocket tee. <laughs> yeah. So guess what? It's my favorite fucking t-shirt. <laughs> You're damn right it is. How yep. fucking stupid are we? <laughs> how dumb can you be as a, like, how could you... Like, you know, all these fucking podcasts with these OnlyFans bitches and other people just ripping them apart. Like, you see them all over. Uh, like, they'll bring these OnlyFans bitches on their podcast and they'll just say really dumb shit. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, like, on my page, I'm like, you need to find a good woman. Like, find a real woman. The love of a good woman, there's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. And somehow, as men, if you ever were curious to how dumb we are, like, we, I, I have everything with Hannah. I have everything I could ever imagine. But all that woman has to do is say, I look handsome in a fucking brown pocket tee with it tucked in and my hunting pants on. And I am fucking <laughs> stiff as a motherfucker. I'm like, yeah, I'll bend you over. I'll fucking eat your ass. I will fuck you up. I will give you the best dick you could ever occur. Like all within five seconds that occurred in my head when she said I looked handsome in a brown fucking t-shirt. It's awesome. Yeah, I like the brown shirt. Everybody, you'll look good in the brown shirt too. Tuck it in. Fucking pair of fresh jeans, cowboy boots. You be fucking boys. It's a great look. It's a fucking great look. <laughs> it's so dumb. I love it. I love it. Oh, man. New thermal, too. That was a big one for people. That was one of the biggest things on last Black Friday. I'm it, it's, it's the thick boy thermal. Mm -hmm. You'd be a little thick in the waist and it not hug the love handles and make you look all funny from behind. That's what I always hated about fucking thermals in thick boy season. Yep. Clingy. Clingy. Yeah, yeah it's thick boy season. Yep. Do you think it's normal? Or all men? You know what they are? I was going to say, is all men basic white bitches too? Yeah. I think they are. Yeah. I think I, I, I absolutely, because it's hunting season. Mm -hmm. Like, it's hunting season. It's thick boy season. It's football season. Like, if there was ever a fucking time for men to be men, it's like right now. But somehow, like, all of a sudden, like, it gets a little bit of a neg neg negative connotation because of the basic white bitch. Yeah. I mean, we have our own zone that we stay in with that. For yeah. sure. And it's like of all ages. Really. Oh yeah! Like I'm seeing, I saw it. My dad was in for a few days last week. Uh, did some painting at the house, but I saw like he he's creeping into fall mode. Yeah, and everything that comes with that. Like the dude legit has he probably has more hoodies and like sweats than like we do. Really? It's like he's his biggest passion is layering up and like being cozy at the house or going to the races and being cozy at the races and a big like nice hoodie but he has like he keeps like he has them for different reasons like this is this is a nicer one this is after work i got my shower already this one goes on i can sit around the house yep. or be out back in it yep didn't see work doesn't have dust or paint all nope. over <laughs> it in the house out back yep. that's it but he had oh a new oh my god yeah he had it so he had a new obx hoodie on the dad, the dad, the dad fucking beach yeah. hoodie. And Kim's like, is that a new one? Because like they were just down this summer. And he's like, no, I think this was last season. And she's like, well, it looks brand new. He's like, I only break it out like in the summertime because it's a summertime hoodie. I'm like, oh, my God. I was like, guys, I, I was like, I know. Guys, it. Yeah. It's dude shit. So then he had another OBX hoodie. He's like, this one for sure was from this year. And it's like a like a French Terry, Heather Gray cream i'm like dad i'm like we made a hoodie almost like this this summer and he was like yeah he's like i looked at it three times when we were down on vacation before i went back and bought it and i was like what i was like what do you mean like what and he's like well i went up he's like i just went out for a little cruise and doing my thing and i saw it and i'm like oh, i'll come went back for a burn run yeah so he went to look at it three fucking times pulled the trigger now has it that is yep but like i i tend i'm doing those things now Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. There, there is it because it's even football season. Like it, it doesn't once once that fucking once it starts creeping in, everything changes. Mm -hmm. And then like if there is a week of crisp air, everybody switches over. Mm -hmm. It's immediate. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. And guys, do, yeah, because I did it with the hunting stuff. Like I think this is to me this is like the coolest shit. And the fact that the camo is like fashionable. Yeah. Like it looks good with jeans. Like you go out, you go train in this with a pair of training shorts. Like you're going for a run. Everyone's fucking stopping and asking. Yeah. Guys like Zach, 
Owens mm -hmm. hit me up and he even said, he's like, dude, he's like that fucking camo you were wearing in your, in the video. He's like some of the sickest camo I've ever seen. That's saying a lot, man. My, my other buddy, Zach from up in Butler said the same shit. He's like, dude, he's like, this is fucking fire shirt. That is one of the biggest compliments you can get. Dude, it's huge. Like that, that knowing that, I mean, potentially the most controversial, controversial, like plane to be in with camouflage. Oh yeah. You know, heavily scrutinized and this is better than this like cult-esque followings for camo hunting and hunting is hunting is a different industry it is it is a different group of people archery hunters are even more so archery hunters are fucking batshit crazy yeah i mean that's probably why i like it um <laughs> but dude the dudes that have been archery hunting as long as i've been lifting weights are some of the most fucking like nitpicky on top of their shit. Like this is just how it happens. Cause I'm start, I'm shoot. There's a million different things that go into it. Yeah. I'm shooting my arrows. Okay. Like, Oh, look at this. It has, you know, the spine of the arrow, the weight of the arrow, the diameter, the fletching of the arrow, the knock, you know, the thing that goes into the string, mm -hmm. all of it plays a role. Okay. There is companies for every single compartment on the bow. The bows themselves, you know, Dodge, Ram, Chevy. Same thing with your bows, dude. <laughs> yeah. This is better than this. I'm like, they all fucking still pull shit and drive. <laughs> However, it makes a big difference. And I really do like my Hoyt. Thank you to the boys over at Hoyt. Evan, great guy. Um, but they are nuts. They are absolutely insane. And everybody still kills shit, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody still kills shit. And my thing is, I'm like, I, I don't even speak your same language. I'm starting to understand the vocabulary. So I'm just having a good time. I'll fucking shoot the arrow and see if I like it. If it if it if it shoots well for me, I like it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm in, I'm in that such early beginner stages of everything. But uh, other guys, they're just like, this is the fucking way I do it. And I'm like, oh, you are. You don't fucking deviate. Nope. Oh boy. So if I start to fuck with you a little bit, it's gonna get under your skin. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've spent all the money they've yeah. tried every single fucking option it's so expensive yeah it's so expensive dude it's it is i learned pretty quick just talking with you and the guys at the property the other night i mean every, but, uh, everything is it's like it's like when you buy a car stock and you want to do shit to it same thing with a fucking bow dude it's yeah i mean you saw real quick we everybody we went to this property for the photo shoot with joel <sighs> so joel cool. joel's buddy their family owns an excavating company and they own almost 400 acres here in Western PA. And if there was ever a Western PA hunting haven, it was here. It was 400 acres. 250 of them were dedicated to just farming. Half of it probably to farming, the other half to farming food plots for killing animals, raising deer. But it's not, it's not fenced in or anything. But it was, I mean, they own an excavating company, so they have all this fucking equipment. They wanted to go set, because we were like, hey, can we come shoot some content with you? Because Joel's been talking about Brent forever. And I'm like, dude, I'd love to see the property. Mm -hmm. So he's like, we actually have a 40-foot tree stand that we got to set with the telehandler. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait what did you just say? <laughs> yeah, we're going to take the telehandler out on the property and set this fucking, this, you know, homemade fabricated tree stand. And I'm like, oh, so we got some fucking podunk hillbillies and, and joel's like yes but we have like he's like nicest tree stand you're ever gonna see i'm like it's really? pristine bro he he fabbed the entire fucking thing himself from the platform to the ladder and it's a 40 foot tree stand that we put up with the telehandler joel went up there was lifted on the telehandler he was tied off not legal, but legal. Yeah. It wasn't legal, but it definitely would have saved his life. I was comfortable, you know, being a safety guy. Yeah. He's like, inspect this for me. I'm like, this is wrong, but it'll, if you fall, you won't die. Yeah. <laughs> it'll save you. <laughs> but, um, but dude, it was, it was insane. We were all laughing because we're like, this is, this is Western PA when you have money. Western PA hunting when you have money. We, we like didn't really talk about it no. after it happened. No. <laughs> but like, like I literally, you could, you could question that the telehandler was made for these tree stands because like the, I didn't even notice like it was carrying this said tree stand the whole drive up to where we were putting it in. Yeah. 
the way they fabbed it, that it was sitting on the front forks and then the ladder spit behind it with just enough reach to hang on that little edge so it wasn't dragging through the dirt as they were driving it to the location. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, I see where they want to put it. I see. They already knew which branches this thing was going to straddle. Yep. Before they put it up yep. there. Oh, dude, they were that. Those guys were those guys. All they do, like they have, they have a hundred and some acres dedicated to food plots for killing deer and turkey, and yeah. <laughs> it was wild. It was. It was. It was. If there was ever like a like a Western hunter like Zach, he's never. He's Zach is in the mountains. Of Idaho, Utah, out there, Oregon, um, that Montana, been to Alaska, all that. If you ever came, if there was ever somewhere that was Western PA hunting haven for turkeys and deer, it was that dude's motherfucking property. For sure. It was, it was. And he was I, immaculately kept. Yeah. Like, well, the dude, Les, he was, uh, he, um, He's the older gentleman. He was in his seventies, moving like he was fucking our yeah, age. Look great. It was wild. Yeah. Uh, but all he does is just prep the property. He's like, "This is going to be fucking. This is going to be the tree stand." I'm like, "Yeah." I'm just feeding into it, you know. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, we're going to kill so many buck out of this stand this year." And I'm like, it's like nice. He's like, "We never put one here. We put that one up over there, and it's like fucking two hundred yards away." It's like we put that one up three years ago. He's like, two bucks every year." I'm like, "Really?" Yeah, he had like a term for it. Yeah. I, forget, I forget what he said. It was funny. Well, you don't also, this guy, I mean, hunters are a special breed. And, uh, like, I'm not we're, I'm not hunting on that property ever. Mm -mm. You aren't welcome unless you're family. Mm -hmm. Like, they have their family. They have their brothers. They have their daughters. They have their grandkids. They have everybody there. That's, that's why they have invested and created that was for their family. And that's a tradition that I'm like. I might not be welcome. I might we I might be able to go turkey hunting. There was a drop of maybe going turkey hunting one day there because I said I never went turkey hunting. Right. So all of a sudden it perked up an ear and I'm like, oh, it might be like an in. Yeah. But yeah. not good. Not hunting any deer there. I'm not killing any other bucks. Nope. Um, but uh, no, it was it was just the traditions alone are what I've. Um, I love so much. Mm -hmm. Like they take their traditions very serious. Their family. Like Brent showed me a gun that was handed down from generations. And I'm like, this is like awesome. And his son was there when he was showing me. Mm -hmm. and, and he's like, and it'll go to him one day. And I'm like, there, like, like that is it's fucking cool. awesome. Yeah. I think they're so important. I think they are. No, it, I mean, it was nice. I mean, we're, we're guilty of not getting out and doing things like that yes it's a problem you know it's a huge problem because i mean we we shot for maybe an hour while we were there and the other two and a half three hours was just staring at the property asking about the property how long have you had it what did it look like 10 20 years ago what did your work look like 20 years ago yep just shooting the shit and and to to be around people that were like us and just open to share it and and get excited about it i mean that was that was super cool it was awesome it's yeah. uh yeah it was the the guy less uh half of his house was dedicated to the animals he has killed over the years one of the coolest rooms i've ever seen it was, I, whenever i was like this is a lovely room of death <laughs> like ace ventura yeah. it was funny because i'm like motherfucker there is five elk on the wall there's fucking 18 18 buck on the wall two antelope mountain lions yep. turkeys you name it it was in this fucking room this it was an incredible room and it was built for trophies it was literally it was uh i don't know who was it was it you aiden or jay somebody was like did you notice the aesthetics of the room like it was perfectly balanced that's, that seems like a jay thing yeah yeah it was, it was like a, i just yeah. walked in and i'm like fuck this is cabela's yeah <laughs> it was there's a mini cabela's like, but, where, uh, where's the pop guns and the almonds yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but jay he did mention the aesthetics yeah he's like did you notice that all of the deer okay like from the center line of the room because it was you know uh -huh. center line all the deer on the left were looking right all the deer on the right were looking left the same numbers and the elk were directly across from one another. The four elk that he had there, yeah. directly across from one another. He said the pronghorns, the, the antelope, mm -hmm. 
were centered with the fireplace and both looking forward. And I was like, oh, my God, you're right, Jay. He's like, all of them. He's like, the bears. He's like, the bears in the directions they were looking on the wall. I'm like, motherfucker, Jay, you pay attention. Yeah. You were on that shit, bud. But he was right. Like, looking back at him, I'm like, dude, you're right. The elk were. Like, there was four elk, two on this wall, two on this wall, and they were lined up with each other. Dude, even to have them evenly distributed, because, like, over the over the fireplace or whatever was all those white tail. Yeah. I mean, you had to start with hanging one. Yep. And know the you. spacing. Dude, the, those they did not take them down and remeasure shit. Like, that was known from first mount going on the wall how it's going to play out, which is super Because cool. the wife uh, was saying there's stuff downstairs. So that was like, you know, uh-uh. We're not, we're not, this is the room is the way it is. We're going down. Yep. Can't overcrowd it. We got our, we got everything laid out. I don't know how big of an asshole, how big of an asshole did I look whenever I said there wasn't, there, I was like, there's one animal I don't really fucking see in here if you're going out West hunting. That was a valid question. But I was like, uh, it was a valid question, I thought. Yeah. Because I was like, hey, there's one animal I don't see on here. And he's like, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, a, like a semi offended. Like I probably have it yeah, downstairs. Yeah. And then I was like a bighorn sheep. And he's like, he's like, oh, he's like, he's like, that's a lot of money. And I'm like, well, fucking butt. Did you look at your roof? <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? You went out west for, for three quarters of this shit. You got some, you got some ching, bud. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know if I, I was like, I didn't know if I offended him. But at the same time, I was like, you, there's, you, you have five fucking massive bulls. And then you told me you didn't, you went out there and didn't kill bulls at some point. Mm -hmm. Like, so you go out to west quite a bit. You've been there 10 fucking times just for this. Yeah. That was a lot. You got some checked. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. But it was a good time. It was awesome. Yeah, that was super cool. Unique meeting cool people. Cool people doing good people doing cool shit. Yeah. It's a main that's like a main priority in life, I think. It should be. Yeah. yeah. Good people doing cool shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which cool shit, I mean, we have a lot on this table and then didn't even mention everything with axe and sledge. Six new protein flavors dropping in the next by the six protein <laughs> flavors dropping from here in the next couple of weeks all the way to the end of the year. Yeah, we have brand new pre workout dropping next month. Mm -hmm. We have one, two, four flavors with that pre workout uh, dropping next month. Then we have two more flavors of that pre-workout and of the grind dropping in the next three months. Um, what else? New just work flavors dropping. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the amount of shit that is occurring within our companies from now until the end of the year is astronomical. It's scary. Let alone what we have planned for Q1 and Q2 of next year with Axe and Sledge. Q1 is fucking loaded. Loaded. Like it, but that's the thing. That's what takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's not cheap. It's not easy. And it involves every single fucking person at this company. Mm -hmm. Like, and one thing, whenever you have, whenever you're doing all this shit, right? We just talked about AAR with all this cool shit. There's all the stuff with Axe and Sledge. There's all the stuff with Just Work. There's all the stuff with Elegance Elite. Like, there is so much shit that happens the opportunity for things to slip through the cracks, mistakes to occur, are inevitable because human error exists. Yeah. It just does. You can't sit there. Like, I mean, I climb up people's asses as much as I can, but at the same time, I, you can't hold everyone's hand forever because if you hold everyone's hand the entire time, all of a sudden, now you're just micromanaging people. Mm -hmm. Now they're afraid to do their jobs. Now they're afraid to take chances. Now they're afraid to be themselves when in fact you literally hired them to be themselves. Like that's what you hire people to do. Be themselves, give them freedom, be you, be creative. Think outside the box. Let me have your entire fucking, just let me have it. But then you gotta be open up for criticism. Mm -hmm. Cause if something sucks, it just sucks. Even though you spent a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort on it, if it sucks, it sucks. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have to have that balance and that's very difficult as a business owner to do. Mm -hmm. I'd probably say that's the toughest thing to do is not get to a point where you micromanage everyone so much that they are not themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's difficult because I really like to be involved. Yeah. And that's tough because I got to have, got to reel it back in Seth. 
can't be Greg Ferrosi. Not all bit. the time. Not all. There are certain times. Bits and pieces are important, I think. But but it's um, but that is that that's the most difficult part about owning a company with this many employees, mm-hmm. is because there is a million things going on, and whenever something occurs, uh, a mistake happens, or uh, a project is under the gun with making sure it gets done on time, and like, you know, all that. It's like things get intense, mm-hmm. and but you you need to be able to trust your people. You know what I mean? That's a that's why I fucking hate the back end of the systems. Yeah. Because I have no idea. Yeah. And what are you what are you gonna do with the systems? Like like, hey, we should do uh we should do a tiered giveaway with this. Well, Seth, we gotta think of the variants. Oh yeah? I gotta look into it. What do you mean? We did it fucking last year. <laughs> right. Well, Seth, systems change. What the fuck? Who changed the system? The system changed the system, you motherfucker, not us. Yeah. I am not in charge of it because that's what happens with all the back end bullshit with Shopify and the fucking themes. And, you know, everybody else knows more than I. But I tell you what, like, that is probably the most frustrating thing about them mm-hmm. because sometimes it's like it's out of your control. Yeah, I mean you're you're at the mercy of how they they built out the software. Yeah. And it which that sucks because we we like to get super creative and and give away cool stuff for different reasons and I think our concepts like are are good idea. Are, are special. Like I they, got a lot of good they ideas. They make our customers feel special. I think it's a good idea. Yes. But then for the limitation to just be like a dead end zone where it's like you can't even just throw more at it to make it work. Like it do- it uh, doesn't work that way. And they do it to help protect their system yeah. so that it doesn't fail at all. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, well, what are you going to do? Are you just going to play it safe forever, you pussy? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking douchebags. Yeah. But that's uh no, it's 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 part of it's part of it all. Mm-hmm. You know? Cuz and every company deals with it a different way. Every company does. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those things like you just got to fucking finagle around it take chances use an app that's a bad idea apps in shopify are dangerous Mm -hmm. and every now and then i'm like we should do it and you're like i don't not with this one bud yeah yes we should nope nope mm -mm. seth it's a bad idea Mm -hmm. okay bad idea i'll ask three times three different ways and get the same answer Mm -hmm. there's there's two completely different ways to do the app and one of them is like kind of cookie cutter it's kind of an app and then the other one is like you better have someone under your roof every day that knows exactly what the fuck is going on like they probably built it and they're part of your team it's got to be both yeah Corey, he's important with that yeah yeah i love that like we have to like whenever you have an idea with anything like if i have an idea and i'm like yeah like it works in my head people are gonna love it like i'm like yeah it's straight and then I'll like tell somebody, you, Shane, Mike, and then we'll be like, we got to run it by this person. <laughs> okay. Fuck you guys. This is so stupid. Why don't you just do it? Well, because we're not going to do it. We got to have our team build it out and make it occur. I'm like, do you know how fucking ridiculous this is? <laughs> but the thing is, the regular consumer does not know. No. Does not know that. Mm-hmm. Like the amount of money that is involved in these fucking systems is just ungodly but it's to protect the company it's to protect the the systems Mm -hmm. and make sure because i mean i we should we (laughs) i guess i'm like i'm like i wish how can people understand like it goes from like like us thinking of an idea this hat this hat is awesome i love it for it to get to your hands (laughs) with no issues is unbelievable yeah i could along the way and i along the way i either thought about strangling somebody or did strangle someone um to, for you in order for you to get this fucking ass someone's getting strangled from the conception <laughs> like the thought of that to you receiving it someone got strangled along the way yeah. Meta- metaphorically piece. or literally yeah yep. <laughs> And I might, or it might have been me hanging myself. It could have been internal, could have been external, could have been the manufacturer, could have been a logistics company. It is fucking ridiculous. Uh-huh. Because, and, 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 but in order for it to get shipped into your hands, like it, it takes, it takes a whole lot mm-hmm. because there's not like, there's not a few of these. Uh, that's the thing that 
people need to understand it's not a few of them it's thousands mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that's why i have a profound respect for anybody that owns a business from it being small even to the big ones like the big ones in order for them to do what they do dude they have they have built some incredible fucking shit dude yeah it's there is some stress involved at levels that are that i'm that i feel at this and not whenever i see somebody that's 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 bigger than us or anything i'm like like how's life how you doing you're you good you're feeling it yeah anything <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and but I think it's I love it. it. It is. Um, I'm very proud of what we do to be able to have a brand that has quality items at affordable prices for the working family man is everything to me. It's 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 everything to me. Uh, just like I was saying earlier, because I know what it's like not to have a whole lot of money to be able to spend on yourself and to be able to create really really nice, high quality, awesome looking items for the working family man that's important to me yep. for him to be able to get a hat for his wife to be like hey you should get this hat you've been working really hard for this i know the release is coming up you have there's a hundred bucks set aside for you to get cool shit like for a hundred bucks you're able to get two to three items mm -hmm. like that's fucking awesome yeah that's how it's supposed to be motherfucker mm -hmm. so i'm I, I couldn't i couldn't be more proud and thankful and grateful for all of you guys and i'm, I'm excited about it Pop. There's so much stuff. It's fucking nuts. We should. How could how, how how could we? It'd be a fucking movie. It'd be a movie to I to, know, to show all the inner workings from beginning to end. It would take a long time to film. Uh -huh. Like it's not just simple. Like everybody on the fucking all the influencers are like, this is my million dollar CEO wake up routine. I'm like, I have my morning routines, but it's not all fucking rainbows and blowjobs, everybody. Mm -mm. It's a lot of fucking hustle. It's a lot of fucking fuck you, suck my dick, let's fucking roll shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least that's how I how I do it. That's how we build our business. Yeah. But I mean, there's it's nuts. Yeah, I mean, I I had a phone call with my with my little brother this morning. He's he's gonna be like interning with us. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Like remotely, he still lives in Eastern PA. He's going to come out here for a few days sometime this semester, but he's essentially just shadowing me. Oh, this will be fun. And, and I told him, I was like, I don't know how much like daily work or actual like projects that I'm going to have you do. I was like, what I do is like extremely unique. And anyway, I just started running him through anything that's transpired from Thursday till this morning that we have changed or had to adjust things and uh, last minute things for the blog, all that good stuff. I filled him in on everything from Thursday till this morning and mm. I got off the phone with him at nine. And he's he like, deep he, breath and... he was like, okay. He's like, well, every day I have to submit one to two pages typed up about what we've gone over. Mm. He's like, I have two pages of notes on <laughs> <laughs> on what's happened since friday afternoon and he's like and you had off all weekend essentially i'm like kinda not really and he's like he's like i'm pretty much good for today i'm like well no we can get back on the phone later i was like i got a bunch of shit going on this afternoon and he's like dude <laughs> he's like you put out like three fires since friday i'm like yeah i'm like <laughs> i also started seven more motherfuckers I and like, i didn't even talk to seth yet <laughs> right that's what i mean because then he was like who else is in there with you i was like Bro, I was like, it's me and you right now on the phone. I was like, I swam 3,000 yards this morning, came right here for this phone call. And he was like, mm. he's like, I can't wait to hear like what happens tomorrow. I'm like, dude, every day. He is going to come here. Just sit. If you just sit in someone's office, mm -hmm. not even yours, you sit in anybody's. Just sit with Aiden for a day. Just sit with, just sit with Corey for a day. Yeah. Sit with Jay for a day. Mm -hmm. And go sit with Nick. Mm -hmm. Go sit with Nick four weeks ago. And you're going to be like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how people handle their day. Mm -hmm. Go go to the shipping department. Go to customer service. Mm -hmm. You sit with any of these people, not even the managers, just the employees. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, 
holy fuck, dude, there's a lot of shit going on. <laughs> oh my God. You do, how do, and you're, oh, like from an owner's perspective, you didn't, we didn't even mention Heather. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. From an owner's perspective, we have to be able to be, have a grasp on everybody's positions and everything going on, just oversight. And then rely on Shane to have the details right. of the oversights. Mm -hmm. And then rely on the managers to have even more details of the inner workings of not just what is going on with the people, but the people themselves. Because the people themselves matter. Mm -hmm. Their feelings matter. Mm -hmm. Their emotions matter. Their thoughts matter. How their day and outside their life is going. And I can say I don't give a fuck to a certain degree because it's sometimes we shouldn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. And it's just be like, dude, I, I know you got some shit going on, but... We got a lot of shit going on for our people at the company and we need this and that. But then at the same time, we also have to take into consideration if something from an outside perspective goes on in someone's life, that's going to play a role in their performance at work. Mm -hmm. And right now, I can't afford to have you fucking 50%. Mm -hmm. I can't afford 75%. I need 100% of you on this project. What the fuck is going on? How can we help what's going on in your outside life so that you operate here at a better degree? And that's before the fucking work even starts. That's just making sure they're cool to perform at this level. Yep. That's... <laughs> and those are the things that, like, whenever I'm, I'm sitting there at nighttime and I'm, like, staring at the wall, what are you thinking about? I don't know. No, no, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. What are you thinking about? Work? What about work? <laughs> what, are we, what, are we going to have a fucking three-hour conversation about what's going on in my head? Let me just think about work. Mm-hmm. It's way easier for just me to think about it than explain a goddamn thing that's happening. <laughs> Aiden's like, Every so I got... <laughs> like, what, what I got out of that convo this morning, I, I, my brother, my family, they have a lot of respect for what we do. They, they know how busy we are. They, they see it. But I don't think he actually felt it. I think I made him feel it oh. this morning, the way I was explaining things. Oh. And... I don't know. I'm I'm excited for him because he's he's 21 years old. Yeah. You know, he's uh this is his last year in school. Um and he needs he just needs to see that there's more. There like there's so much more than There's a big world out there. I, I'm I'm really excited. I think from what he was saying, I have to actually uh come out when he does this final presentation on his internship. Um I have to be there for it. Which I'm really excited about. You love it. I want to meet. I want to meet his teacher. I want to see his professor, because I don't. I think he's going to be one of the very few in this course that has the things to say and is going to see the things he's going to see um, that aren't just corporate perfect. Do this. Do this. Do this. Like it's the furthest thing from that. But yeah, I, I, well, I'm excited I mean, think, for him. Think you about know? it. Like the opportunity. To go to see, to, to have the day-to-day -day interaction with a small business owner is incredible. Mm -hmm. Like the s small businesses of America are what made America, America. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then to be able to have an up-close interaction with a brand, brands like we have, of something that is global. You know what I mean? That has millions and millions of dollars going through it. And for your his big brother to be an owner of that mm -hmm. and to have the inner workings of the personalities and the characteristics of the people involved and to see, you know, emotion and us actually take into consideration employees and, and how they act and moving people from out of state to get here to have an impact. Like that's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fucking emotion involved in here that has something that you'd hope a company has. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and to be able to have that is what, <clears throat> that's a lot to unpack mm -hmm. in yeah. two pages. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. And, and I think leading up till now, I mean, I mean, you know, being, being through certain college courses, like the, it's all, it's all just what the textbook and the curriculum is telling you what a business should look like, that you should have a marketing department and accounting department and they, they have their protocols and they work together well they do they we do we have that but like because he wanted to know he's like what what am i going to be doing every day and i'm like i have no fucking idea i was like i'm going to talk to you on the phone every day when i get into the office and that's when you'll know what we're going to be doing that day yeah. i was like and that's how every day is outside of a few scheduled meetings and a few things that don't 
uh, sh- we don't stray from. We should. We should. Uh, I want involved now. That's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I want involved now. <laughs> we should actually just make him part of a department. Like once a week, we'll be like, "This week you're you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be in design, and anything that's going on in design, he's a part of." Mm-hmm. And then we'll make him be a part of the accounting department. Like we'll they'll give him like fucking bullshit, stupid tasks, just bitch tasks. Yep. And then we'll put him in the marketing department. Then we'll put him in customer service. And then we'll put him in. Uh, we'll put them in sales for a little bit, like yeah. make them do like mock sales to people. Yep. Like we should just make him like. Be... Sell me this pen. <laughs> I don't want to do cocaine. Stop. <laughs> stop talking about lewds. <laughs> He'll be like Alvin. Alvin keeps telling me to sell him a pen. Why am I selling him a pen over the phone? I thought we sold supplements here. Like, what are we doing? We should just make him like fucking. Uh, how could we do that? That'd be fun. Have you? We gotta torture him somehow. Well, I guess Kim stopped over at the warehouse. Um, oh yeah, make him with, with like the do. Boys. Yeah. And um, she was talking to Piper, and he's like, he's like, so what? Bobby's brother? Like, is he gonna be here? And she's like, yeah, he's gonna come out for a couple of days. He's like, can I fuck with him? <laughs> and she's like, of course. He's like, no, like, like how I do everyone in this in this building right now. And he, she's like, well, yeah. He's like, so you're okaying me fucking with him? And he's like, fuck. He's like, he's probably like Bob. He's probably a good kid, isn't he? He's like, fuck. He's like, I can't really give it to him the way I want to. Can we help him develop a bad habit? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a given. <laughs> that's a given over there. But dude, think about that. Think of what we just went through. All the 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 the, the number of people that that are there. Mm-hmm. Like he would have a ball. Be great. He really would. He would. Yeah. Because he's he's living in this little window right now yeah yeah he there's a big world out there there's a huge world full of really cool people he needs to see it and taste it one time yeah he really does i mean you get that whenever we like do the squats with seth tour mm-hmm. that we were doing i met so many cool people the midwest actually has really big people mm-hmm. like people in the midwest are just bigger yeah like they're big white farm boys mm-hmm. that's true mm-hmm. and then there's 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 big black farm boys too mm-hmm. like that one dude that fucking... were you there for that that was, was Wisconsin. Jay. That was Jay. Probably Jay. Yeah, it was Jay. It was this fucking dude. He's just they were we went we were doing the squats and usually we have like two or three racks. Mm-hmm. And the one rack, there were so many big fucking people that I could do pull ups. On their bar. On the bar. <laughs> there was a group of dudes that were all six foot three to six foot six, two hundred sixty to three hundred and twenty pound men. There was a group of them that came out. I'm like, no bullshit. You, you, this is, this is fucking awkward for me. And the guy's like, he's like, yeah, dude. He's like, this is just, he's like, this is just Midwest stuff, dude. Wisconsin people are fucking big and like to drink. Mm-hmm. It was scary. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, big fucking people. Like me, when I was fucking, when I was 240, like I was nuts. Like just sauce to the tits stronger than a fucking ox. Front squatting 405 for sets of fucking eight to 10. Mm-hmm. Like that shit crazy stuff. But these dudes aren't sauced out. Probably taking some shit, Mm -hmm. but they're not sauced out and just stronger than a motherfucker. Yeah. Like we were doing, we were, what were we doing? We were doing something. We were doing uh, some, how was it? Yeah, 225 on the bar. And the guy uh, just got caught up, okay, like in in his form, Mm -hmm. okay? So then, uh, Rather than like pause and like reposition himself, he got into like a football stance where he staggered his feet and then like just picked the bar up and re-racked it. Cause he like fell, he fell back and was like the bars were too low, the safety bars were too low. Mm-hmm. So like as he's like trying to get himself back up, rather than just like dump it, mm-hmm. he repositioned his feet and stood back up with the fucking bar. And I'm like, dude, I think that was 405. Was it 405? I remember watching that clip when I was editing it. (laughs) The dude, the dude, yeah, probably was. This guy fails, goes halfway up, goes back down, re-stances, and just casually boo-doop and puts it up. It's like, if I stagger myself, I'll drive this bar right back up. I, 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 I like, was just kind of taken back. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you are that strong of a human being just to be able to, like, kind of, it was not straight on his back. Like, it was kind of cockeyed and just picked it back up and put it on. Yeah. 
that dungeon in Iowa had some. Yeah, I was just going to say Iowa had some boys too. There was some fucking just Midwest shit. Mm -hmm. I was invited to go hunting at both places. Mm -hmm. People were like, hey, you're welcome to come to the farm. And all of a sudden they're like, yeah, my family has 800 acres here. My family has 200 acres here. And I'm like, this is all I could think of. So uh, on the way out there, I was listening to my my country stations mm -hmm. and jason aldean has that song about the flyover states mm -hmm. and it's the midwest because it's just like fuck them states mm -hmm. that's how people feel about them and then most people when you think of iowa you're like what the fuck do i want to go to iowa for what do I wanna, what's in oklahoma wisconsin fucking cheese you know <laughs> yeah but it's like whenever you go there the people there are what make the states incredible mm -hmm. and then like guys showing me their bucks you know their their fucking massive whitetails on their properties and then like as they're taking the picture it's like at sunset you know what i mean i'm just like this is why the, the people here are the way they are yeah it's it's beautiful and doing the tour i've gotten to meet so many people that just they embody everything that we stand for like it's pretty cool that we were able to give them a name mm -hmm. like you're an all-american roughneck you're some fucking silly podunk motherfucker that works your balls off, loves life, and works hard for your family. And even though you might not be the smartest, even though you might not be the handsomest, you are one down-home good, hard-working motherfucker. And I love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. It's really cool. The Squats Tour has been cool just because of all the cool people. Doesn't matter where we go. No matter where we went, we have went all the people are are very similar in mindset of life yeah super cool super cool but um so uh in honor of the podcast coming back i have uh as hannah and i drove out to uh we had a wedding to go to over the weekend um I was like, hey, I was like, you know what? I was like, we need to get like a list of questions. It's like, like we used to on the podcast and do the ask the internet stuff from the bar stool and fucked up questions yeah. and go back and forth. And uh, she's like, you never asked my question. Like immediately remembered it. I'm like, oh man, you got a question? So we started putting together like little fire quick questions and also some that would elaborate on it. And, uh, but I have questions for us that you can be welcomed into Aiden. And uh, everybody, you should probably just fucking, no matter when you're listening, you should answer them too with us because that's always been part of it. These aren't like over the top, like, who would you rather fuck? You know, like, uh, there was that weird question. That I immediately go because we, everybody was asking like, hate it. yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Like, oh, you're between your dad's fucking you from behind and you're and your mom or something. And you got to move an inch one way or the other to get out. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, Dude, guys, yeah. that's super incest. You're watching way too much fucking weird incest porn. Like, you got to. Got to cut that back. You got to move back from that, guys. Like it's more along the lines of don't just don't do that <coughs> too far. But um, these are some of the rapid fire questions that we could go through real quick, and then there's a couple fun. Let's do um, it. I got this. Somebody asked me this question too. These are rapid fire, so we'll do rapid fire, and then some of the other fun stuff. Um, burritos or tacos? Oh. Burritos. Burrito. Burritos. I'm a burrito guy. Yeah. Okay. Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi? Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Yeah. Coke Zero or Pepsi Zero? Coke Zero. Coke Zero? Mm -hmm. Diet Coke or Coke Zero? Uh, Dude, I'm not a cola guy until recently. Yeah. Big pop guy here. He he, he saw my pop collection. <laughs> Coke Zero. I'm Coke Zero guy. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, we'll take yeah. that. Tits or ass? Ass. 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 Everybody. For yeah, sure. It's great. Great. Cake. Cupcakes. Mm. Cake cake yeah cake or cookies 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 or brownies <sighs> cookies <laughs> brookie <laughs> not allowed to say that damn it <laughs> i'm i'm uh, everything i was the same way i'm big cookie guy yeah so how about i just realized how big of a cookie guy i am <laughs> last fall last fall into the holiday like i've always prided myself on being so savory over over sweet like i'm like mm -hmm. i like salty shit i'm a fucking cookie guy Every time, like, I don't like store cookies. Fuck them things. Mm -hmm. But homemade cookies, I am an absolute whore for. Me too. Whore. Like, I, I've convinced myself since bodybuilding that I don't like cookies. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't eat cookies. I don't eat cookies. Bitch, every time I eat a homemade cookie, a good homemade cookie, I'm like, fuck, dude, I really like cookies. 
Like, I don't do that with donuts. Like, you can give me donuts. I can eat a donut and be yeah. like, oh, it's a donut. But a homemade fucking cookie cooks me. Yeah. I'm in. Like, during the holidays, homemade cookies. I'm like, fuck. Hannah's birthday was just the other day, and one of the gymnasts made cookies. Mm -hmm. They brought them in. And this is a homemade chocolate chip cookie recipe. And I saw it, and I'm like, oh, look, cookies. And she's like, yeah, cookies. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> And then later on that night, before I have my peanut butter and jelly rice cake, I was like, I should eat the homemade cookie. Even though I don't like cookies. I said that to myself in my head. I don't like cookies. I open this fucking thing up. Uh -huh. and I break one in half. And I'm like, man, that was a really good break. And I eat it. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I am a cookie guy. And Hannah's like, how are they? And I'm like, they are fucking delicious. Yeah. I'm a cookie guy. Damn it. Like a classic chocolate chip cookie. That's my shit, dude. I mean, I've prided you. We everybody knows you're a fat guy at heart. Everybody knows 100%. I'm fat guy at heart, but they know you're a sweet guy. And I'm, I'm I'm salty guy. Doritos cookies, like that's how I look at it. I'm on Bob's side. I might be on your side. Yeah, I I I've convinced myself, and I prided myself on being like I don't like sweets. They make you fat, motherfucker. I love cookies. I fucking love them, dude. I go. I'm now. I'm like I'm all nervous because I'm cookies are coming. Mm -hmm. It's cookie season. <laughs> yeah, like. Fucking especially at, you know, we went to the wedding too. You, you, cookie you, table? No cookie table. What? No. Do you, you guys have cookie tables at weddings? I don't know. Candy table? It was a candy table. Mm. Yeah, it was a candy table. We usually do one or the other. And they would have a candy table. And I'm like, I was like, because uh, it was Western Ohio mm -hmm. and a Kentucky and Indiana type shit. We were in Cincinnati. And I'm like, in Pittsburgh, you do a fucking cookie table. Mm -hmm. It's like a big deal for the women, like the older women, like the aunts and the grandmas and stuff. Cookie tables in Pittsburgh are massive. And Hannah was like, she even mentioned it because I was like, hey, I was like, we should go get like, should get a cookie or something. She's like, no, it's not Pittsburgh. They don't have cookie table. I'm like, oh. I was like, no cookie. I saw people eating mm -hmm. stuff. She's like, they have like a candy table. I'm like, this is fuck. I was like, man, cookie table's a big deal. Fuck that candy. <laughs> cookie tables are a big deal. They are. I'm a cookie guy, just so everybody knows. You can't eat just one. It's a though. problem. I have a problem. I love cookies. Yeah. All right, uh, where were we? Oh, this is an, this was a, this was a Hannah question, but this wasn't the question. Uh, sauce on the side or sauce on top? I guess it depends what it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, just general. We're talking general, gentlemen. General sauce on the side or dressing on the side or dressing on top? Side. 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 I'm a side guy. Side. Um, I don't trust <clears throat> anyone. Uh, this is where this is where it starts to get good, but we'll go to this one. Uh, pizza question: thin crust, regular crust, or thick crust? I'll just go regular. The regular guy. Uh, it's kind of a tough question. I know he's Bob's a big fan. Yeah, I mean, if there's pizza, I'm eating it. I don't give a fuck. I mean, same. I agree. Okay, it, it could be delivery Domino's, and I'm like, I'll eat it. Um, I love pizza. I'm a thin crust guy. I like thin crust. However, this is where Hannah and I got into our uh, discussion driving because I'm a thin crust, and she's like, "What about cheese stuff?" I'm like, "That's not fucking no. That's not mm -mm. that's mm -mm. that's out of the question." I was like, "I am a thin crust, but airy, like thin crusted pizza, but then I like the airy crust on around the pizza. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like it's thin but airy, so there's like a big crunch." On like the the bubbles, the crust is bubbled. Yes. Oh, you like the emptiness? Yeah, really. Big on that. Yeah, because I like I'm I'm big sauce guy too. I mean, not just steroids, but sauce in general. Mm -hmm. um, big sauce guy. <laughs> big sauce guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sandwich or hoagie? Sandwich. Hoagie. Oh, you're a hoagie guy. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm a sandwich guy. I like fried chicken sandwiches. Mm. Love fried chicken sandwiches. Yeah. Hoagie guy, you yeah. are a fucking Pennsylvanian for sure. Pennsylvania's big hoagies, like a town, like an Italian hoagie, and a fucking mm -hmm. Italian hoagies are her shit. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, Aiden? This is a question: Is a hot dog a sandwich? We were just talking about this. Corey, oh, nice. Corey was trying to say it's it's a sandwich. I'm like, Corey was trying to say it's a sandwich. Yeah, he's full of shit. Yeah, that's not. It is not. Nope. No, it's hot dog's a hot dog. It's, it's connected. It's in, it's, in, it's in its own category. It does fit the criteria for a sandwich. It is, it does, kind of. Yeah, if I'm if I'm thinking sandwich, I'm like lunch meat, like ham, turkey. Yeah, yeah. Hot, hot dogs, a hot dog. Its own it's category. A hot dog, yeah. Hot dogs get their own categories. Mm -hmm. They are a special American tradition. They are. I 
a good all beef frank i do enjoy in the summertime yeah not like going for one but if it's a grilled i won't do microwaved or boiled Fuck all that shit. Yeah. Grill is the only way I'll eat a dog. On the on the weekends, Bardeen's uh, makes them outside. Do they? At the, they have a little stand. You can go get like a sausage sandwich or yeah, a hot yeah. dog. And I, I rode that loop there seven times on Saturday. Did you get a dog? I, I would have. I had a runoff right off, off ah. the bike. If it was just a ride, definitely would have stopped for the sandwich. The run would have beat you it up. It smelled so good. Man. <laughs> Man. All right, what else do we got? Um, okay, this is the question. This is like the, the question that Hannah was saying that we should ask. And I might have asked it, but I forgot it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, uh, which would you rather eat? And we don't eat a whole lot of like processed bullshit. Mm -hmm. Don't eat a whole lot of McDonald's, Wendy's, or we just don't eat. We don't eat it. But she's like, what would you rather eat? Would you rather eat a McRib from McDonald's or a tuna salad sandwich? From Subway, make rib. Never had Mick it. Rib, but oh, fuck that tuna. Fucking sure. She was arguing with me because I said a fucking make rib. I'll eat two. I'll eat a fucking dozen of them before I ever touch tuna. Salad never had. I've never had one from fucking uh, Subway. from Subway. I've never. I haven't eaten a make rib probably since I was a kid. I don't know if I've ever had. one. I might have had one when I was a kid. Yeah, I don't know. They bring but, them back like once a year. Yeah, yeah. I, but she's like, she's like, she's she said. That disgusting bitch said she's eating a tuna salad sandwich before the McRib, and I'm yeah, like, Kim. Kim would say that. No, she no, she used to go. No. She used to go to Subway and get a tuna. <laughs> so, so did Anna. I'm like, what the fuck are That's you talking about? Said. I was like, you didn't get an Italian BMT. She's like, no, I'd get the I'd get the fucking tuna tuna. I'm, I'm like, no, tuna. no, no, not doing it. It hurts my belly thinking about it. But yeah, we she but would do that. That was the thing that her and I go back and forth. Like we'll think of things yeah. that I'm like, no. I was like, I'll eat a McRib. Mm -hmm. I'll eat two of them motherfuckers. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, essentially just tasting like barbecue sauce. And that's like, I, I, that's what I said. Yeah. But oof. have you seen the video of Paul, people ripping Paul Saladino apart about the <laughs> McDonald's? <laughs> McDonald's fries mm -mm. has like three ingredients salt. Like the salt they use on the fries <laughs> has three ingredients. And you know him. He's fucking batshit crazy about selling you people. It's oatmeal's bad for you. I'm like, dude, you're going a little far yeah like you go do your carnivore shit somewhere else like you can't but this guy did they called him stitches like a stitch stitch incoming mm -hmm. whenever someone oh like, oh yeah, yeah it's yeah. a video type thing that people are doing like a reaction okay so paul is outside mcdonald's with the fries and he's like there are three ingredients on the salt in these fries and it says stitch incoming and the guy pops up he's like paul he's like you know you're talking about crack right He's like, McDonald's French fries are cracked people. <laughs> they are fully aware that they are bad for you and you should not fucking eat them. And they go back for them yeah. every single time. Yep. I And I'm like, motherfucker is right. Like those French fries at McDonald's are legitimately something that people are, in a sense, kind of addicted to. Dude, they're really good. Like McDonald's French fries are iconic yeah. in the food category. And he's like, yeah, Paul. He's like, he's like, but they're crack. You could tell people that, they will do the most ungodly thing. You could grow a third fucking eyeball and they'll be like, oh, so I'll just need to get glasses with three things on them instead of two. <laughs> like, they're like, not fucking not eating McDonald's French yeah. fries. Let's yeah. say McDonald's Diet Coke. Dude, the McDonald's Sprite's a big deal. Like, you ask a fucking pregnant woman. Uh, because every pregnant woman has a certain fast food or a certain food that, like, it didn't matter what the fuck was going on. They're eating it. Mm -hmm. Like me being the hormonal bitch I am when I was sauced out of my mind, like I knew how my hormones fluctuated and the things I thought and ate and did at certain times. I could only imagine if I was pregnant. Like, so whenever a woman's pregnant, I'm like, you want, you want to eat Oreos? Let's go get a couple Oreos. You want this? That's what it is. McDonald's Sprite was a big one for women. Hannah loved hoagies, but she really wasn't allowed to eat hoagies because you're not supposed to eat lunch meat when you're pregnant. Right. You're also not supposed to smoke crack or jump on a trampoline or anything like that lunch meets one of them mm -hmm. uh but uh yeah no <laughs> yeah oh this is another one that her and i got into a uh, uh quite the debate so would you rather have like you got to choose one or the other ungodly bad breath or bad body odor oh dude i'll take the breath just stay away from people <laughs> like just kind of like tuck your mouth away when you talk 
Oh, dude. Like you, you know, like dude, you smell, you smell some fucking some fresh onions at the gym. You're like, bro, who Blech. fucking stinks? Yeah, the body's just oh, like, dude, like, like bad body odor, yeah. bad body odor. Not like a little stink from working out for seven fucking hours. Like shit. We're talking yeah. like, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. But if you have a pet peeve about breath, dude. I do. Like bad breath. Like you ever, like we're not talking like a little bit of, oh, you got a little stink on your breath. Mm -mm. Like morning breath. Mm -mm. We're talking no, like, fucking like two o'clock in the afternoon. You're like, God, what the fuck is that? Do, is, do, you, do you have something going on? Yeah. Yeah. Like halitosis or some <laughs> shit. Is that what it's called? I don't know. I have no I idea. Say. I don't know where that popped up. I could be halitosis might be do something with your feet. Look at him. I think it's bad breath tinnitus or something. I think I'm right. Come on, give me something. Halitosis. Uh, bad breath. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, look at shit. you. I was right. A persistent, unpleasant odor and exhaled breath. <clears throat> like, Usually not serious, but commonly called bad breath dude i i don't think i don't i mean <laughs> scrub that tongue bro it just says like why does my breath smell so bad like it's just a series of questions <laughs> why do i always have bad breath People are Googling. warning signs dude if you had if you had like ungodly uncontrollable bad breath that'd be a tough one mm -hmm. <sighs> the stink thing dude's big i think i'd take the breath personally i'd take the breath if I had to choose one, because like you said, I could be like, hey, Bob, how you doing today? <laughs> you. Right. So glad you're, you know, like turn my head. Uh -huh. But like bad odor, dude, you have somebody walk in this room and it's like a little warm. You <laughs> smell them motherfuckers immediately. You'd be like, ah, fuck, Bob's here. Yep. Hey, Bob, stay <laughs> or you're going to get in their vehicle. That their, <laughs> their scent's always in there. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, give me the chills. Maybe jeebies. That sucks so bad. Yeah, you can you... mask the bad breath. Like you can, you can take care of that. You can eat Listerine packs nonstop. Yep. Throw Only breathe in. out of your nose. Be a tough one. Mm -hmm. Be a tough one. <clears throat> oh, this is when we were dying. We were dying. She was looking stuff up now. She's like, what would you rather have? C cup man boobs or a two inch penis? Oh my God. <laughs> She was dying because she's like, what would you do? And I'm like, I was like, man. And she goes, looks at her finger. And I'm like, I was like, I think I'm taking the titties, bro. Yeah. Taking the yeah, titties. I've been there before. Fuck it. We'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. I can work them titties <laughs> off. Yeah. Yeah. You can fluctuate with those things. The dick, you're stuck. Dick, oh, yeah. yeah, you're. Uh -uh. Yeah, you're stuck. In nope. Titties. Can't do. I'm taking the titties. Yep. Taking the titties. She was dying. She's like, I can see you with fucking, you'd need a bra, this and that. I'm Such like, a hard decision for a man to make there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, this is the other one. Lose your sense of feeling during sex or lose your sense of taste. Now, I was with her at this, so I couldn't say taste or I couldn't say sex. Mm -hmm. But that's a tough one. Are these permanent or like one time? No, permanent, dude. Like forever. 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 You got you got titties forever, and two you got two inch penis and you can't feel nothing with Dude, it. That's fucking that. But you got titties and you could taste. <laughs> I mean, I I love eating a lot. Well, that's what I told her. I told her I'm like I I'm you know she, she's like you, you know I'm a foodie. Mm -hmm. However, dude, I really like getting my dick sucked. <laughs> I mean, it's it's up there on my daily priority list. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, dude, there's nothing better. Like, where I'm only really looking for pizza on a Saturday night. <laughs> you know? But like, <laughs> I'm looking for the other side of things. Every, I, I tell you what, dude. As often as I can get it. I have a relationship with my cock that I love. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing better than waking up fucking hard as a rock. I'm like, I am going to rub this dick all over your ass right now. Yep. And I don't care if you run away from me or try to. I am fucking, my dick is going on to you. Yes. There's, come on, you're going to take that away from a man? No. I feel like I'm living the most optimal sex life like yeah. there possibly could be. That's, a, that's fucking quite the statement there, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> like just between frequency and quality. Uh, quality. Quality ass. Like, probably not something I thought I'd be getting into, like, my younger self, you know? 
like uh, just have some awesome sex life you know uh i'm you know that and that was a question that came up too was the love and lust thing uh -huh. you know and i'm like i was like you know you can lust after a fucking you know look at her she looks good i don't know i have pretty good fucking sex though like i i i, I take pride in throwing down mm -hmm. like having a fucking like killer session where i'm like yeah you're telling your friends about that one you're i'm fucking you up and it was good it, it, but like you 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 need to have that and i think that's why the love is so important because during the lustful thing like you really don't know how to move as well like bitch i know how to fucking move you i know how to fucking make you moan i know how to make you fucking scream and you know how to fucking throw my toes and make me kind of squeal like yeah like that's what i that's how it should be it should be that's how the sex life should be and that happens through love i think mm -hmm. and it because that, that's you know i enjoyed that dude I'll, I'll take the uh i had to think about that one that was hard but fuck the food yeah i'm cool yeah, fuck man. the food because then you just you don't get fat yeah you're, I, not gonna, you're gonna eat shit no i'm gonna eat fucking chicken and rice and eat that pussy yeah <laughs> yeah that shit i eat doesn't, doesn't taste good already <laughs> oh dude you're, you're there's nothing better there's, I don't think there's anything better than just like fucking like rock hard as a motherfucker throwing pipe. <laughs> nothing better. Yeah. Like can you, I, whenever I was sauced out of my mind, half of my day was dedicated to fucking thinking about sex. Yeah. 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 I mean, there was a good part. Yeah. I, uh, that, yeah, it, me, yeah me me and gear yeah it was yeah. it was a lot yeah there I was could... one winner in particular <laughs> when we were living over in lower Burl. yeah yeah i mean i mean that's all we mode. had to do we worked it was cold <laughs> fucking fucked, you know what i mean <laughs> fucking you're bulking more food fuck it bro i'd wake up in the middle of the night sweating my fucking balls off in the middle of the winter time with a fan going and like, okay, you want to yeah. throw down? Do like, I mean? There's nothing else to do. No, I'm up. I'm hot. I'm, <laughs> I'm hot. That's what I mean. Like, My dude, dick's could, always I, hard. I could not imagine not having any feeling like it. That I, yeah, yeah. Wake up. You'd be, stiff, dick, be like, yeah, man. What's up, dude? Let's go. It's back. Let's it's... fucking run this into her and see what she does. Yep. <sighs> oh man, yeah, good times. Every guy has that, though. Every single guy. I, I think that every single relationship should have that. Mm -hmm. Like, that should be a priority in your relationship. Like, that's why at the end of the videos, I'm always like, slap the old lady on the ass, let her know you love her. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, you're supposed to. Like, you're supposed to let your significant other that you think she is sexy, that you love that ass. That, like, that is, that's my ass and this is your dick. <laughs> yes. This is how it's supposed to go. We should be able to do these things together. Like, that's something that, I don't care what anybody says, like uh, the uh, uh, physical attraction and, and the physicality of a relationship is super important. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, I did see somebody on the on the fucking comments in the YouTube about. video. Somebody was like, you shouldn't slap your woman on the ass. Mm -hmm. That's showing like being degrading. I'm like, bitch, you need slapped on the ass. Mm -hmm. You need fucking somebody needs to lay into you. You fucking uptight bitch. Mm -hmm. Like you're you're. It, Whenever you have a significant other and you guys have each other, you should regularly let each other know how much you're into them. Like, there's even fucking TikTok videos about, like, you know, girls, like, sticking their ass out and guys just walking by and be like, I ain't touching. They're like, what's wrong? Something's wrong with you. Yes. Yeah. If there is a bent over ass in the household, that's what should occur. Yeah. How it works. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I don't know. I think that you should. That's important. Otherwise, what the fuck are you doing? It solves a lot of a lot of fights in my house, like a ton. My dick is a problem solver. Yep, it is. I like to think that I'm somewhat of a. Oh no, I was trying to be really clever there. My dick is somewhat of a therapist too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a counselor. It it's is a therapist. Yep, by the hour. <laughs> mm. It's so much fun. Well. In seriousness, though, like it, it is. I mean, oh. like, we, 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 me and Kim get disconnected often because of, of work and we're not on the same page with shit. And sometimes it takes that. Dude, everybody one, one does. Good fuck and then, like everything's back to normal. Everything is. Like we're, we're both feeling better about it, you know? I think it's so common in households. Yeah. 
because it's so much shit going on. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on all the time for people that, you know, because it's the whole thing. Like if I have a bad day at work or something's intense or Bob has a fucking shit day at work or, or Kenny over here had, you know, work at work, got fucking overtime. You know, this happened at work. He comes home and his wife's loving him, rub that ass all over him, show him the titties. He's like, the day was good. Hey, babe. Yep. What's up? <laughs> My dick's hard now. Like, it just changes. It just sets it the equilibrium. And, and the same yeah. thing. And it's like, that's why it's like, you know, if, if, you're, if your woman has a bad day at work or something happened and you come home and just grab a hold of her and let her know that you're fucking into her, mm -hmm. that can instantly change her, that sense of touch. You know what I mean? And that's what you should be searching for. How can I get her route up? How can she, like, feel me and know that I'm into her? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Know that our relationship isn't a lie. The love that, I, that he has for you isn't a lie. Like, that's important. Yeah. 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 Listen to us fucking just saving relationships. Yep. Your dick's a counselor. It's a therapist. Yeah. Problem solver. The, the problem solver. <laughs> Man, wait till I tell her about that one. Put that on the next zipper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that's a good one. Problem solver. Yep. Welcome to the show, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. No, that was, and that was the other thing uh, she asked me, because once we got on this topic, it just fucking, we're alone in the truck having a good time listening to tunes, and it just steamrolled into, well, what's your favorite position? What's this? What's that? And I'm like, I was like, babe, you, you know the answer to all of these. And she's like, I know, I just want to hear you say them. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the part, like, she knows how to fuck me up. Uh -huh. Like, we always have the thing in, in our household, we're like, who's, who's going to win the, the fucking, the session? Mm -hmm. Like... Is she going to get me off before I can get her off? Or how, how's it go? It's like a competition. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's always great whenever we both win. And I try to make that happen. But if she, she's competitive broad. And I'm a fucking, I'm, I'm an ass guy. Yeah. The fucking second that thing starts getting flaunted in my face, <laughs> I'm fucking done. Mm -hmm. Cooked. Yeah. So doggy style and reverse cowgirl fucking ruined me. Mm-hmm. Reverse cowgirl ruins me. Yeah. Ruins me. So whenever I get that action, I don't even try and fight it. Mm -hmm. I just give in. I lean right into it, enjoy it for the three seconds that I have, and then I'm good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I let her if I let her have control, she oh, yeah. wins every time. Oh. Every time. Yeah. If I'm in control, there's like there's a good chance we're both oh. having a good time. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, and like you said, there's times you have to take control. Yeah. But then there's times that I just, I'm like, fuck it. I'm in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's fun. It is fun. That's fun. <laughs> Sometimes it's so good. You're like, you can make a lot of money online. <laughs> Dude, there's a fucking gold mine waiting to be had on my phone right now. Like, like fuck, do we sell our soul? It's, I know. <laughs> well, well I, I was thinking of, uh, once you said that, um, you remember, uh, the movie with Cameron Diaz and uh, Sex Tape. That movie, Sex yeah. Tape. Mm -hmm. uh, and how they made their video. And then their friends ended up watching it. Mm -hmm. And it got them really into it. And I'm like, I was, uh, just immediately thinking of that. I'm like, that'd be a fucking thing that, like, because they're like, dude, you should put it on the internet. We are loving it. They're over there fucking in the car. And they're like, are you watching it? They're like, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's the, the only fan things is why. The only fan things is wild. It it's crazy. I just I just so I like we just got done talking like that's our significant others and we're joking about it. We're having fun. Like I I'm I'm cool. Like Hannah's mine and I'm hers. Like mm -hmm. it, to to break our bond would be it'd be a fucking feat in itself. And the same with you and Kim. Mm -hmm. And the only fan stuff is so ungodly popular mm -hmm. that I'm like, is there that many people out there searching for something that they cannot possess in reality? Like the OnlyFans thing, like the people talking to them in DMs are not the girls. No. Like, and they know that. Mm -hmm. Like, you're talking to a room full of dudes mm -hmm. about the girl that you think you're talking to is a dude messaging you back. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that because, dude, we know the people that run them. Well, I think, I think even the people that are, are spending the money to do so, they know it too. That's what I mean. Do they know? They you do, think they do? They 100%. No, oh, that's fucked. They 100% do, but they're buying into the script. They're buying into the, 
to the replies and all the dude there's girls making stupid money and i'm like i i legit saw like a whole breakdown of someone's page of like how dude it's like a sales it's like a fucking marketing oh 100 percent from like vip stuff to showing this certain thing in the free feed and then having the funnels the paint the pay-per-view stuff that comes into your inbox on OnlyFans every day. Oh. So who, whomever you're subscribed to, right, that you're already paying money to be subscribed to their page. You're paying to be subscribed to that email or DM blast or whatever to so, pay for something that's in there. Yeah, so now they can mass market to your DMs <sighs> every day. <sighs> like, hey, $10 unlocks this. Hey, $5 unlocks Five, this. $5 gets this. Twenty-five, fifty dollars gets you a personal message and a flick of my bean. Yep, dude, that's fucking wild. Yep, but it makes my belly hurt because it's not real. No, but there's that many people out there searching for something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think I think it's like that instant, like instant gratification from it, like whether you know it's real or not, that they're like getting instant engagement. Bro, that's not good. <clears throat> that's a big nasty dopamine dump. That's not real. Yep. For that fuck. That's why Pete. That's why there's all these people talking about how bad you know habitual porn is mm -hmm. and all these things. And I'm like porn. I was like fuck. It's just we're talking about porn. Yeah, it'll fuck you up. But dude, you get involved in that OnlyFans shit. Now you're having this. You're having a fucking insane dump from that. You're you're making conversation like like going on Pornhub for for a minute is it's you're not the jerking same. Jerking off for your fucking you're not time. you're not talking you're, you're not conversating with people you're building a fucking relationship. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That's with, fucking with mind blowing. Because like at, at this point, like they're probably not even it's probably not even an actual person in there. Might it's probably bot. just an AI or a bot that's like auto replying to shit. For sure. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. That's it's a terrifying. Gold mine on there. What's that doing to society? Crap. Shoot. Sugar cookie. Ah. Oh. The real thing's way better. Yeah, yeah. It's way better. Uh -huh. I love my dick and jerking off and stuff. But man, <laughs> I fucking love a sloppy blowjob and some fucking titties bouncing in front of my face way more. Mm -hmm. Like my titties. Yeah. yeah. What do you know? What's this bitch going to do for me? Like, and the thing is, like, they're annoying. Mm hmm. Like you could you could have a fucking ten sitting there and you're like, man, look at this bro, she's fucking smoke show. And then she opens her mouth and you're like, oh, oh, you make me want to vomit, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> oh, and I'm sure there's people that feel that way about me. But guess what? That's fine. You're allowed to. It's okay. It's fine. But fuck you. <laughs> then don't fuck with me, and I won't fuck with you. Like, I couldn't imagine having somebody that doesn't have anything to offer from, like, an intellectual standpoint or from a, an emotional standpoint. Mm -hmm. And that's what these girls, sure, they're making a lot of money. And money is great, but money is a tool. It does not buy you happiness. Mm -hmm. There are people that are fucking millionaires and billionaires that still are not fucking happy. They still continue to search for something. They still continue to search for whatever the fuck the meaning of life is. And it's like, if you can't share that with somebody, you're fucked. Because mm -hmm. I tell you what. Some of the most fun times I have had with Hannah and my kids just involves like simple things. Yeah. And sure, I have a whole lot of nice shit. But like we started this podcast off, we weren't supposed to be here. No. Like we're not supposed to. <laughs> it wasn't designed for fucking for for this to occur this way. We worked ungodly hard to get here. And sure, we need to enjoy the fruits of our labors and all these things. But like. I, I like really old school trucks. I like a rocking chair watching my kids play. And uh, I enjoy people. Mm -hmm. Good down-home people. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that the reason that now, you know, a big reason that I want to work so hard with everything is to help other people grow themselves so that they can get to uh, a level of their own personal worth and value that benefits more to the community of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, sure, I want to continue to make more money and do cool shit, but that money needs to be utilized as a tool. And that tool could be providing a good time, an atmosphere for people to go to that would, they never otherwise would have experienced. Mm -hmm. It could be a toy such as a vehicle or something that 
is a dream. Um, I think those are important, but don't expect those things to be satisfactory for long periods of time. Yeah. Who you are as a, as a human being and the relationships that you build are everything. Money is not everything. Money is a tool, and that tool can be used to help have good times and enjoyable and do cool shit. But if you think that having all this will just make instantly make you happy, that is not true. Yep. That is not true. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I love it. No drugs. Man, good times. Yeah. I love it. It's like old times. It does. It feels good. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. But other than that, what else didn't we cover before we wrap her up? Oh, there was one more. Sports cars. Old school, new school. Mm. New school. New school. Mm -hmm. I'm old school. I know. I have a respect for it. You have but, to. But if I'm if I'm going out and buying something, it's probably fucking brand new. Yeah. I just I'm attracted to the new tech. Yeah, and the, I was the just because I was looking at I was I got wrapped up this morning doing cardio and vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's where that question came from because I was like, oh, another one old school. Because I'm like, there was old school stuff and there was some new school stuff. And the new school is just so fucking powerful and scary mm -hmm. that it's like, bro, you're fucking ripping. But then the old school stuff, I'm like, man, look how fucking vintage and loud and ignorant and fucking yeah. just it's like, why I, yeah, you, I could smell. Yeah. I smelled the old yeah. school vehicles. That's why I have a huge respect for you it. You have to. I think it's what built my love for like the new age stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was also like, maybe I should just go buy like a fucking $10,000 old school rusted beater, okay? And then drop a fucking nasty new school engine in there. Because there's people around here that can do those things. I'm yeah. like, I was like, maybe that's, I should. That's a cool move. I know. It, it's more or less something that I would do. But that was how I was like, man, because yeah. there was a couple people that did it. I also saw dirt track racing. I got wrapped into that. I would love to do that. Dirt track racing? Yes. Yeah. I would love to try my that. My dad goes to them every Saturday night. I was like, this is something it's that... It's not racing, but... It's... No, no, it's not racing, but it looked so much yeah. fun. I'm like, this is something that I'm like, I don't know why I never looked at it as something cool to do. And I'm like... Bro, it's super cool. It's really cool. I Put it this way. Somebody put a cool reel together with some sick music. Yeah. And it sucked me in. And I'm like, yeah. I would feel like Ricky Bobby. Yeah. And if there's ever an ultra ego or another character I would love to become, Ricky Bobby. Yeah. Yeah, me too. It's so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to go fast? I love it. Well, everybody, I enjoyed. Yeah. This is good. We're back once a week. We'll be on the podcast, the HWMF podcast. There are a few people that will be coming in to do some podcasts too, mm. lined up. Uh, in the future, they've asked about a million times, Dr. Prisk, every time I see him, he's like, you know how much stuff we have to talk about? You know how many dumb people there are in this industry that do stupid shit? I'm like, doc, 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 I know, I know. So he's, uh, but it's in the way he, he just always loves a platform to be able to voice his opinion about what things, what, cause there's a lot of people doing a lot of stupid shit out there. Mm -hmm. So I have to go see him. He's going to cut these fucking pilar cysts off my head. There you go. Yeah. He's a surgeon. Yeah. He could do it. Yeah. The person I went to, they retired because I've had pilar sister genetic, but yeah. He's like, we'll come in the office, maybe on a Sunday. I'm like, okay. Just get him out of <laughs> yeah. there for he's you. Like, I'm like, you cool with that? He's like, yeah. yeah. Could you imagine having that skill? You're just comfortable enough fucking. It's like, yeah, I'll pull that shrub out for you. Yeah. I'll trim the trees. Yeah. <laughs> Chop your head yeah, open. I'll, I'll cut that out. <laughs> Be fine. I love it. Crazy fuckers. <laughs> Other than that, everybody, make sure that you guys are ready Thursday night. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Use code Seth. Or code Bob. For 10% off. For 10.1% off. 10.2% off from Seth. I don't know um, if we can do decimals. Are I'll we? Just, well, I'll have to ask the oh, God. systems. Guys. I'm trying to have fun here. See what happens, everybody? We're trying to have a good time, and this fucking bullshit happens. Yeah. But use my code. You'll get more percentages off, even if it is a tenth of a percent. Um, I'll change it before any of you can use it. I'll... <laughs> I'll fuck something up in the system yeah. if I go diving in. Nope, this is going to be an ongoing competition, though. Uh, it will be fun. Yeah. It will be fun. But no, we uh, we have set it up so that you guys can get 10% off mm -hmm. of this release using code Bob or code Seth. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, at $100 or more, you can either get the free air fresheners or the free fill the freezer t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, very cool t-shirt. Uh, the air fresheners also are pretty funny. We have I haven't really talked about it much, no. but the one there's we have the dick air freshener and the scent is dick. Yeah, fresh dick. Fresh dick. Yeah. 
I put that one in Kim's card. <laughs> so at $100, you will be able to get the four pack of the air fresheners or the fill the freezer t-shirt. Um, everybody, thank you so much for all of the support with the companies. Um, for the past uh, several months, we've been working incredibly hard to bring a lot of cool shit for Q3, Q4. I am a Q3, Q4 guy. Yeah, I love the holidays. I love this time of year. You guys know that. Um, and Strong also, finish. St- only sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Only sometimes. Just don't show me your butt cheeks. <laughs> don't do it. Um, but no, I'm, I'm super excited. I can't thank you guys enough for the support. We have a ton of cool shit coming, like I said. For Axe and Sledge, there is... We are, I don't think you could ever pile more shit than we did into the year, but it's because this is our time of year and we absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. Six new protein flavors, new pre-workouts, new flavors, maybe a little sour stuff. Sour stuff's Q4. Everybody loves sour stuff. Um, it's been probably one of the most requested things for the day. Uh, but again, everyone, thank you. Make sure you share the shit out of this podcast. Aiden probably has a few things to chop up and put out there. Bob, it's good to be back. It's Love you, brother. Good to be here. Love you too, dude. Pumped. Yes, sir. Aiden, good job. Fuck yeah. I don't think you pissed anybody off. Besides the little fucking camera fuck up. Ah, that's that's fine. fucking Shane's fault. That's Shane's fault. Yeah, come on, Shane. What the fuck? Yeah, fuck him. Tripod. Um, <laughs> he's over there in fucking, he's out in Ocean, Ocean City, New Jersey right now. Yeah. Living it up. You know he's going to make a baby soon. For sure. Oh, yeah. All right. They're getting married in October. Yeah. Could you imagine Shane with a child? I don't know how that would go. Actually, I could. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He he is he has grown up quite a bit in the past several years. He has. But he's 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 a unique character. Mm-hmm. Did you see him with a girl? If he had a boy, I could I can see, I could Shane see him with, with a son. son. Yeah, for sure. A daughter. I think what might would happen. Look at you. Like, you would have- that she was just gonna. Own his oh. ass. Own him. Oh, 100%. Princess. Dad, I want this. Yep. I bet you he would yep. be like that. Mm-hmm. You are right. Mm-hmm. He would probably give in to everything. For He'd sure. spoil the fucking shit out of her. Mm-hmm. Brittany would get so pissed that he's spoiling her. Yeah. And Shane would just soak it all in. Mm-hmm. He'd be a complete pushover with the daughter. Yep. Probably hard as fuck on his son, though. Oh, brutal. Oh, ruthless. Yep. Like baseball drills and stuff. Oh, oh he'd fucking... be over the top. Yeah. He would be on the opposite side. We should ask. We got to find out. Yeah. Or yeah. Or just wait. Because we'll, we'll it's gonna. <laughs> we're, we're gonna. We're gonna we'll see, see it. it happen. We'll see it live. Everybody, thank you. Keep being good, motherfuckers. Share this shit out of podcast and uh, get ready for Thursday night. Tons of cool shit. See ya.